Hello, we want to welcome you to our show today, the Sunnyside Community Voice. And today we have another exciting show. For the past couple of weeks, we've been spotlighting our <coughs> law enforcement agencies. And today we are real excited because we happen to have with us today uh, the Houston Police Department. We are going to spotlight them on today. And with us today is we have Chief Charles McCullen, who is the chief of the police department, and we also have Pastor Nash, and we have Ms. Mary Roberts with us today. And today we wanted to we wanted to bring to our audience some of the good and positive things that our police department does. Uh, we have a great police department, a huge police department, and they cover a lot of areas. And and we wanted uh, uh, Chief McCullen to come on and and kind of talk about what's on the horizon for the police department and and the things that are that are going on under his watch. So we welcome you today, Chief McCullough, for being here with us. Well, thank you. I am certainly uh, appreciate the opportunity to come and talk with you today about some of the exciting things that the men and women of the Houston Police Department is doing mm -hmm. and uh, in our partnership with the community. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Uh, we're, we're just glad to have you here. So yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to let you tell us some of those things that you uh, that you are doing uh, that's going on with our, our Houston Police Department. And then we're just going to filter a few questions uh, and just talk about uh, what's going on with HPD. Okay, well, thank you. Well, first of all, I, I, I'm certainly... Uh, uh, you know, fond of the Sunnyside Division back in 19, late 1976, mm -hmm. early 77, uh, I was a young rookie officer, and that was the area oh, of Houston wow. that I was yeah. assigned yeah. to Sunnyside. Mm -hmm. But today, just to give you a little bit of a background about the Houston Police Department, we have about 5,300 police officers Ooh, and, a, and another <laughs> 1,600 support staff civilians, as we refer to them. We almost have a workforce of about 7,000 employees with an annual budget of about $700 million. Um, we strive, and our goal every single day is try to protect the two and a half million people that live in the Houston, uh, uh, city of Houston, that's mm -hmm. spread out over 600 square miles. That, that's our major goal. So and, and we have some exciting things that we're doing. And, and when I became police chief, one of the three goals that I had for the police department Number one was enhance police community relations. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a big priority. Yeah. Yes, it is. Because the police department is such an integral do. part of the community, mm -hmm. and especially minority communities, yeah. because <clears throat> uh, that over the time and over the years have been very, very contentious at times, yeah. uh, you know, due to certain events. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that I wanted to make sure that we are accountable and uh, we can't arrest our way out of this situation. Mm -hmm. I certainly believe that uh, in, in, in our society today, if people are not afforded a uh, legitimate means of making an education, I mean making a living <clears throat> through education, training, vocational training, mm -hmm. they're going to find illeg illegitimate yeah. uh, exactly. ways. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Chief, let me work with you to the show. <clears throat> let me say this, Chief, you know, funny thing about it is we hear so many bad things about the police. Mm -hmm. and, and with 5,300 people, I mean officers, don't you think sometimes that you need to hear some positive? <laughs> yes, of <laughs> course. It does. <laughs> I mean, yes. you know, now, 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 and, and we, we hear all the bad things. And all the time, mm -hmm. you don't get an opportunity to express right. all these other people that you got working. These are good people. Yes. You know, I went to attend three funerals of officers, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I sat there. I heard these families cry. It was in the morning. And I said to myself, you know, these are people. They put their lives on the line every day for us. Get up in the morning, don't know if they're coming back home. And we stay home so hard sometimes. I said, sometimes we need to hear something positive. So what this is a show today, we want you to talk about the positive things about your officers and, and, and about your staff because I know there's some time that you get a little upset yourself. Yes. But but there's some time when people need to come. And we, we want this show to hear you talk about the good things about those, some of the things that they do in the community, some of the things they do in the city that are positive, helping the young people, the seniors and all that. 
I think sometimes we just need to settle down and, and get our minds together. Let's explore some of the good things about the department. Well, that's very, very, very good point. And, and certainly uh, with a large workforce, you know, uh, you know, you, you do hear, uh, you don't hear all of the positive things that these men and women do and, and the dedication, pride, and professionalism that they have in their job. But I can assure you, and I want to talk about two specific programs that we just have started and uh, I'm looking really, really uh, for positive results of these two programs that's going to affect uh, our community and particularly minority communities. Mm -hmm. One, we have started a program called TAPS, mm -hmm. uh, Teen and Police Service Academies. Uh, we got a grant from the Department of uh, Justice that we have targeted 50 teenagers mm -hmm that have been um, uh, transferred to alternative schools. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These 50 teenagers, uh, for whatever reason, because of their you know, drugs, violence, mm -hmm. uh, that type of conduct, Behavior. can't go to regular school. Mm -hmm. And many times we give up on those children mm -hmm. and they wind up going to jail Too in the open, penitentiary. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have a curriculum that lasts 15 weeks mm -hmm. And after that, we're going to have a graduation, and we our goal is to save those 50 children a blessing. A blessing. That's good. from going to jail mm -hmm. and going to prison. Mm -hmm. And and we 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 want to be able to bring those kids back so they can be integrated back into their right. communities and regular of course, schools of course, uh, and not be isolated. Because mm -hmm. if you tell someone they're bad and you put out. them in a special mm -hmm. place, then they're going to act of course out. They are. That's one. <coughs> Two. <coughs> This year, we want to start a sobering center. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many people that go to jail mm -hmm. because they have substance abuse problems. They're intoxicated mm -hmm. simply because we can't leave them where they are. They're a danger to themselves right. and others. Mm -hmm. We plan to start before the end of the year a sobering center mm -hmm. to where when people have not committed any other violation mm -hmm. except for being under the influence of mm -hmm. some intoxicating substance, mm -hmm. we can take you to a sobering center. That's great. Yeah. And have <clears throat> all the social services mm -hmm. that will address homelessness, mm -hmm. uh, drug abuse, mm -hmm. mental health mm -hmm. issues, mm -hmm. to get those people some help and get them out of this vicious cycle of, of right. just constantly going right. to jail. Of course. You know, and I'm, that is, that is almost in line with the shows that we had. Yeah. Uh, we mm -hmm. had about a six week, about an eight week course of mental health. Yes. And part of that, we brought in the law enforcement part of, yes. of that. Because a lot of times the people are let out of jail, they have no place to go, they end back. It was just a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. and, and on that show, we were talking about if it was a place for, you know, for someone to go, you know, that, that, that they could get, uh, could get some help. And we found out so many things just through this show mm -hmm. that, that you have, um, uh, is it, what is it, CIC, there, there is a time, there's a police officer that you can call if it's somebody that's acting. Mm -hmm. One of our crisis out of, intervention out, teams, yeah, CIT. Yeah, <laughs> right. We did yes. not know about know that. that, and yeah. we found that, that out, yeah. you know, through our mental health show. So uh, for you to bring that up now, that is good, because there are so many of them that they don't, they don't have any place to go, right. and maybe all they do need is mm -hmm. some uh, some kind of guidance somewhere. So that's that that would help them at, at least and get them back, uh, try to get mm -hmm. them back on the right track. So well, that's a good program. And we have to do these type of holistic approaches to bring all of our resources of the social services, law enforcement, all the community resources mm -hmm. together to make sure that, uh, because resources are precious, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're dwindling from federal government, state right. government, city government, mm -hmm. everyone is challenged. Right. And, and I think the same thing can work with, with others who actually find themselves in jail or prison. 95% right. of the people that go to prison get out. <coughs> then what? What do you yeah. do with them? We got to be able to integrate these individuals That's back right. into our society, right. give them yeah. an opportunity to work and have legitimate opportunities to feed themselves All right. and, and take care of themselves. Right. Otherwise, we can't break the cycle. Right. Now, the cycle just keeps just keep yeah. going round and round and round and round. Mary, do you have a question for the chief? Uh, not so much of a question, but I was just sitting here listening to him mm -hmm. and some of the things he was saying about the youth and the people that's homeless and they are drinking and most of them the drinking come from a problem mm -hmm. that they have encountered or something they feel it passed on through them from family issues that need to be addressed in a way that 
they don't feel guilty and that they're yes. not condemned for it. Mm -hmm. So I think that program that you have for the youth to, to put them back in society and maybe that 50 will be able to impact another 50 and we start a whole generation of another kind of youth that can make a, a commitment and, a, and be to the community that they come from instead of making pulling it down they can be part of the regeneration of the community so I admire that. Well thank you so much and, and if, if you know our taxpayers uh, you know the citizens of the city would understand it costs sixty thousand dollars a year to house someone in the Texas yeah. Department of uh, Corrections. Mm -hmm. Now if, if we save one of those kids mm -hmm. out of the right. 50 We've saved him, and we also saved sixty thousand dollars. Right. What can we do with sixty thousand dollars? Right. We can we can teach job training, right. education. Right. I, right. I mean, right. we can use those mm -hmm. resources in other exactly. ways. Of course, you know. exactly, exactly. Uh. And now, you may not. We we look at our, we look at our, I see the police officers, right? And you do have some good officers out there on the, out there on Very the street. Very good. Uh, we had a young lady that uh, that her car stopped. And, and this is just one story, and I'm sure you've heard a whole bunch of them. Her car stopped. These, there were two officers, Ms. Sonia, there were two officers that helped her push her car. Right, I saw that, man. Yeah. To where she needed to, they got out, they helped her push her mm -hmm, car. Mm -hmm. and, and she thought that, that that was just the greatest thing. As a matter of fact, we tried to find out the badge number and all that because we wanted something, you know, we wanted mm -hmm. them recognized for, for stopping and helping her. Now, they, they could have just waited to, but right. they helped her push her car. You know, into mm -hmm. safety. So there are a lot of incidents that 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 the officers do that that need to be recognized mm -hmm. uh, 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 from the citizens. Because, uh, as Pastor said, you all leave home every day. You know, you you don't know, and 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 I get so emotional about it because every time I hear a police siren, or I mm -hmm. hear a fire truck, or I hear any of that, that's a, it, it, it troubles me because that's a potential mm -hmm. officer right. or fireman or somebody that yes. may not come mm -hmm. back home to their family. And a lot of times we forget that uh, that they have families too. Yes, you mm -hmm. know, they have fam. They are family people. That you know, they have homes that they need to go back to. So. We need to appreciate the fact that they're putting their line, their mm -hmm. lives on the line each day for us. Uh, so let's not be so hard, but but look at here's a man that's leaving his home just like I leave going yeah. to work every day. Yes, okay. uh, uh, I'm looking to come back home. I may not come back, but right. their chances of not coming back because they don't know who they're going to run into right. out there. Right. You know. Uh, uh, we just need to be a lot less hard. Well, well, thank you. And I can say this. I, I travel around all segments of this community and this city, and we have broad support from all segments. Mm -hmm. uh, just like uh, the few, the police officers that commit misconduct mm -hmm. and make mm -hmm. mistakes, they're very, very, very few right. and very rare. Right. Just like the people fine. that criticize <laughs> the police are rare <laughs> and small in number, right. even though they may get a lot of camera yeah, of course, time. Yeah. 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 But if you yeah. look back, uh, on, on our police applicants, we always ask them the question, why do you want to be a police right. officer? Mm -hmm. And they're very civic-minded. And the, the answer, the universal mm -hmm. answer will always be, I like helping people. Right. Exactly. It's the course. same way people join the military. <laughs> of course. They want yeah. to defend this country. They mm -hmm. want to make sure that their loved ones, relatives, family <laughs> members, co-workers live in peace. Yeah. And if we didn't have them. Yeah, if we didn't girl. have one, yeah. if you didn't tell me to stop at that red light, if you didn't stop mm -hmm. me when I'm speeding, if I, if you know, if if my tags on my car is not right because I didn't take the time to do it, what yes. would happen? You'd have a city of, you'd have people just chaos. doing chaos, doing chaos. everything. So yes. the, the, the laws are there, yeah. and the rules are there to not be broken. Someone said to me once that rules are made to be broken. No, they're made to follow. Yeah, yeah. they're made to follow. <laughs> you know, uh, just because you can break them, don't mean yeah. you should break them. So we commend the police department we really, right, we really yeah. do now have i gotten irritated at a police officer that stopped me for a ticket <laughs> yes. yes sir yes. i did yes. have i tried to argue my way right. out of a ticket yes sir yes. i have yes. no i didn't run that light no i didn't no i didn't but in reality right. i have to look back and say if you gave me the ticket i was wrong yeah right and, and even and even in the Bible says that we all should obey the law of the land. That's right. You knew that's where he was going. Yeah. You, knew that's where he was, you knew where he was going to go but, with. But you, but you know, Chief, one I was really impressed about the program uh, for the people that need their bad drinkers. Right. I was invited to one of the courts that I didn't even know it. Uh, they had in existence. Uh, it's, a, it's a DWI class court. Yes. One of the judges invited me. 
And I really impressed because what they were doing, they was going to send them to class. And rather than incarcerate them, right. they had to go to class. And at the end of the period, they would bring them into the court and give them certificates. As a matter of fact, I, I, when I got to the court, I was surprised because it was more like a banquet atmosphere. <laughs> had prosecutors, judges, lawyers, it was piled up in that courtroom. So when the judge introduced me, I made a statement to man. I said, I didn't know this court is this. It's almost like a, a party going on. I said, this really impresses me because what you're doing, Judge, you're giving these people an opportunity to get their life back together, yes. get the families back together. So I think the program that you're talking about initiating, I, I saw that last week. I think it's a very good opportunity for people because a lot of people, they're going through a lot of things now. Uh, oppression, uh, we got a lot of unemployed people, people yes. doing all kind of crazy stuff. So sometimes they turn to the Bible rather than go to the Bible. Absolutely. And so your pro, your, the program makes sense to me. Now, Chief, I want to commend you. That, that that you came here and we wanted you to come. We're not coming here to beat you up because that's so many times that, that you have officers that you know. Right. They need uh, commending, commendation, yes. but yet they get hooked with everybody else. So yes. this is a good opportunity. We wanted you to talk to the viewers and tell them you got officers doing a great thing. You got programs established, we're trying to work with the young people, which is so vitally important. And I think it's a good opportunity for you to do that. That's why we want you on this show. Well, we, well, I certainly appreciate it, and uh, yeah, you know, a lot of officers throughout our, you know, throughout the department, men and women, that actually volunteer their time to be mentors at schools right. around the Houston area. Uh, they mentor at the Boys and Girls Club. Right. Police officers are very, very civic-minded, and they're concerned about our youth. They are our future mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because yes. we have a philosophy at HPD that if we can save our youth, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're reducing crime. Right. Th that's exactly right. You know, yes. that's one individual mm -hmm. that we don't have to incarcerate. Right. We have to right. lock up to use our right. resources. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And exactly. uh, it's helping society. So that's what we're all about. Our crime reduction strategies is not just about arresting criminals, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but also preventing. Of course. Uh, you of know, course. And we put a lot of time and effort into to that's that good. side of, of our that crime great. reduction that strategies. Great. Well, that's, I commend you. That's Believe good. me. That, 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 <laughs> that, that is, that's good to hear you say because uh, the, the, on the negative side of that, people always say, well, they just want to arrest people, but you also want to uh, you wanna work with people. With but you need somebody to need arrested too. Yeah. <laughs> now, and I do want to say that because uh, uh, if you break the law, you, I mean, you break the law. You, yeah. you, you pay the crime. You do the, uh, what is that, that phrase? You do the crime, you do the time. Well, I mean, there's you know? a reason why we have yeah. jails and prisons. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They, they are needed <laughs> yeah. in some cases. Yeah. 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 So it has to be. Can't let everybody go. Right. <laughs> you, know, yes. you, you, you have to do that. So we are just we're just proud to um, uh, to have uh, and and we always because uh, and I want to give her a shout out because she's mm -hmm. one of your officers. We have a police officer that's in our church and and right. we're proud of her. She she upholds your name well. Uh, yeah. She uh, she she stands proudly and she's proud to be yeah. a police officer. She wears a badge. She wears a badge well. And as a matter of fact, she's going to be marrying um, uh, Pastor Nash's grandson. So, and congratulations. Uh, we, yes. Uh, <laughs> her name is Latricia Deason. Yes. So we, we're excited that we have a part of you, mm -hmm. you right. know, with us. Uh, we, we go to her and we ask her various questions. She can, she can answer uh, various questions for us. So w we lift the police department yeah. up. Yeah. Not because she's there, but we lift right. the department because we need it. Yes. We, we need the police department. So. And I have friends and family. I have a lot of family members that live in Sunnyside, all over in, in yeah. Houston. And, and, and they tell me when uh, things are going well, and yeah. sometimes they tell me when things right. are not okay. going so well. And that's good. So that's good. They that's constantly good. Yeah. evaluate yeah. me and right. tell me what I need to do. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, Pastor has done a lot. Has done a yes. lot, and a lot of the police officers they they know him. Yes. You know, in Sunnyside. Mm -hmm. yes, so we course. see a lot of you in Sunnyside. Yes. A lot of times we see a lot of riding in Sunnyside. And I think what, what not just for Sunnyside, I'm sure they do it all over the city, but it makes us feel good that if if we need you all, yes, when we call, you're there. Yes. You're but that's, there. That's what is important about having a, a strong relationship with the community. I've known Reverend Nash for mm -hmm. a number of years, for quite mm -hmm. a while. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, uh, Difficult problems uh, come up, as they always do right. from time to time. Mm -hmm. He knows me. I know him. Right, right. And when you know someone from that a personal standpoint and you know that they're a person of their word, it mm -hmm. makes a difference. That it makes does. a difference. You know, when they tell you, hey, this is what I'm going right. to do, mm -hmm. they have confidence that you're going to do that. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, you know, Chief, one of the things, too, I think, would have forced that laws, believe me, 
You need a lot of prayer. <laughs> I do. <laughs> keep me certainly. Yeah, I want you to keep me with the congregation I got. And okay, and Man, I need a lot of prayer. Okay? Yeah, nah. so I know uh, dealing with those that that number that you need a lot of prayer. You know, and I commend you. You, you stand tall. Uh, I like that about you. Stand up for your man. And a lot of times, you know, you have to do that. You have to put yourself in position. And and a job like you, you're gonna be criticized and sometimes crucified. Yes. But it, at the end of a day. When you get home and you assess all of this stuff, I'm talking about from my viewpoint, okay? Right. I, 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 I feel the need. These people need prayer. We need, we need God to protect these people yes. as they go from place to place. And you always run into some, some nut or something like that, you know. So right. you need prayer. We, we believe me. We pray for That's why we accept this program so we can bring people on with a positive spin about the people that they're in command. Well, that makes a difference to me. It so does. we commend you for that, okay? Well, thank you. And, and I certainly appreciate you keeping me in your thoughts and prayers because it is a very difficult challenge. Uh, you know, from day to day. And, and when I go to sleep at night, you know, I get self-satisfaction and gratification out of the fact that did I improve someone's life, right. uh, someone's quality of life in this city? You know, if I didn't do that or mm -hmm. I can't say that to myself every single day, then I fail. Yeah. Right. Of course. Of course. And, and that's, the, that's the wonderful thing. I just want to uh, say that uh, I have good... I've always had good rapport with because I've already, whenever I talked to one and got stumped, you know, yes. I, I was always satisfied and pleased with it. But one time in particular, uh, it was at night and I was dialing a number, and I don't know why I dialed uh, 911 or something. And when they came on, I told them it was a mistake. I made a mistake. But then trying to call it again, I did it again. Again, I said a mistake. So they said, okay. But about an hour later, someone knocked on the door, and it was a policeman said, I come to see, we got a call from this house twice. We come to see if you are all right. And that was so impressive to me. They just didn't yeah. take my word for right. it. They came to make sure that I was okay. You know, and, and there's something to be said about that. You know, just think about that. In the United States, there's only three digits that you have to punch in in your telephone, mm -hmm. 911, yeah. and you can get a representative of government show up at your door 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 911. Yeah, that's Those numbers yeah. work in any city, in mm -hmm. any state mm -hmm. in America. Right. That you can have a police officer at your door by just dialing three days. Well, that's great. See, one of them, I'm going to let up my hoop because I'll, I'll talk. Little kids, for instance, and I, I tell parents all the time, one of the things you don't teach a kid uh, to be afraid of police officers. I'm going to call the police on. You don't do that because no. it might come a time that that when child, you might be in a situation exactly. that they need to call the police on or need to talk to the police on. And because of that, they've been painted so bad yes. and, and used as a fear monger, you know, somebody. You, to, I don't think parents ought to do that. No, no, you're right, Reverend. <laughs> it's, it's a good point. You don't, you don't use a police or law enforcement officer to try to discipline your children or make them act in a manner that you want them to act. You want them to know that men and women in uniform, if you're in trouble, uh, you need assistance. This is the person that you can right. go you to can for to. protection. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. You know, if someone mm -hmm. is doing something to you, you need help, whatever, this is the mm -hmm. person exactly. that you should reach out to and right. trust. Of course, exactly. to the yes. talking about, yeah. Right. And yeah. you, 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 because when you do that, that grows into them. It does. It grows into them. Yeah. And I can remember back when I was young, I don't know how long ago that was, but when, I can right. remember back when I was young. That long ago? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't fear the police, right. but I I I, rever I, rever Respect I, I respected the police because I know that that if you did wrong, right. this was going to happen. So yeah. it kept me from doing anything that I thought that the police was going to come. But Pastor, that's a good point because we I, I hear mothers around our church will say, "I'm gonna call the um, I'm gonna call the police on you if you don't yes. stop." And you really shouldn't do that because no. they should if when they're riding in the neighborhood, there is nothing wrong with a kid. Uh, walking up to that car Absolutely. and talking yeah. to that policeman, yes. because that's that. You just said that you want to get you want to get our kids back into mm -hmm. the community. You want to be able, they want to be able to walk up to the car. How you doing, Officer yeah. So and So? You know, right. and and you know that if you see Officer So and So driving down the street and you saw something that was wrong, you'll be right. more apt to go to him yes. and mm -hmm. tell him that right. something is happening mm -hmm. versus. 
I don't want to get involved. Right. Oh, no, I don't yeah. want to do that because police might take me. Yes. You shouldn't teach. You're right, right Pastor. You really shouldn't teach right. your family. Right. And the next thing we, uh, before we get to that, we don't always, we talk about maybe what an officer has done, but we don't say what our action was that caused that action. And then we go and say the negative part in front of the child to the child. Mm -hmm never correcting, well, this has happened because I said and right. did this. Yeah. And the officer had no choice but to do this because that's his job and responsibility. And we keep <clears throat> doing that in his mind. And, the, you know, they always think, okay, no matter what I do, this is what's going to happen to me. Yeah. And it, it puts a barrier between the, the community or the child and what the help that they need to get when mm -hmm. they need it. Yeah. I shouldn't have to feel the lead butterflies in my stomach every time I see a police no, car. Absolutely. I shouldn't have to do that because if I'm doing the right thing, I yeah. shouldn't have to feel it. Right. Um, because we always laugh uh, as they're going through the neighborhood or if they're parked somewhere. I shouldn't have to wonder, oh, Jesus, who are they looking for? They're looking for who are they looking yeah. for? But it should be, he's watching out for us. Right. He's taking care yeah. of us. Uh, he's making sure that nothing is happening right. around us. And, and if he stops me and asks me a question, then he's stopping me because there's something that he wants to know about. Yes. We should have that, per you're right, we should have that personal contact yeah. uh, with should. our police officers because we should be able to reach out and touch them uh, at any time. Now, that's an open door that needs to be opened. Yeah. Because open for us to be successful, we need information. And, you know, that is the one byproduct that we have to get from citizens in the community. And if people are not trustworthy, not comfortable mm -hmm. speaking to the police, they're not going to give us information exactly to right. solve exactly. crime and exactly. put those bad exactly. people that are in jail that should fear the police. That's right. Yeah. right. If, if you're out here robbing, raping, you need to go to jail. Uh, you should fear the police. You <laughs> should <laughs> fear the police. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We're going to be looking for you. But, yeah. You know, like when we, and back in you know, some years ago, we used to do a lot of parades in our neighborhood. Yes. You know, remember we used to do the, same, the, the march on the drugs right. and, and, and all of that. And I, I told Pastor, as, as, as the years go by, we get a little bit, we, we haven't done it for a while, but, but it really helps us that I can get on the phone and say, someone <coughs> just the other day, you know how they're still in copper, yes. uh, uh, and, and this, we have mm -hmm. a community service uh, set up at our way that they can come and do community service at our activity center, and would you believe it was one of the kids at the community service activity center that was trying to break in the house to steal the couple, but the police were there. They got it. You know, they they got there. it. I they thought got that it. was amazing. Yeah. Now, uh, you're doing community service yes. for stealing copper and brass, and then, to steal it again. then you fixing to come to where we are mm -hmm. and yeah. do, it. do it, but the police were right on yeah. the spot. Right. And guess what? And a neighbor believe it or not, is the one who called the police. Yeah. Right. We were fascinated by that. <laughs> How do we have to look out for each other? We have yeah. to look out for each we other. Do. So we I do. see what you're saying when you say well, you, re you have to rely on the citizens in the community. to. Uh, we all have to be to, a brother's keeper. We do. Mm -hmm. But we Chief, do. now we, we wind it down. Yes. Why don't you talk to the viewers? What would you like for the viewers to know about your officers? Well, uh, first of all, <coughs> I, I would like for them to know that for, you know, the past two years in a row, we have reduced all violent crimes around this city. We have That's been good. more open and transparent in, in my administration. Uh, we have reduced internal affairs complaints. Uh, we have put uh, policies and procedures in place to make sure that there's more accountability. Uh, we took the perjury clause off of internal affairs complaints. If you get arrested for interfering, resisting arrest, or evading arrest, supervisors must come to the scene mm -hmm. and approve those arrests. So we are, everything that the community has told me that they have concerns about, we went back and addressed it. And we have enhanced our training in our cultural That's diversity. Mm -hmm. So I, I want the community to know that we're open and transparent. That's Thank good.